This is going to be a short training just to ensure we all are familiar with the duties for keeping up with the master shells and making our courses as successful as possible and really doing it in a student friendly way. First thing I want to say is if you are not aware of which master shell or shells you're going to be coordinating, then reach out to your program coordinator or dean because you have been nominated for this position. It's it's really a leadership position within your department, so you want to make sure that you speak to the other players in your department uh, and figure out just what you're supposed to be doing. Also, any program coordinators or deans that are, are listening to this or watching this later, be sure that you reach out to your team members and let them know uh, which classes they're going to be managing. The good news is that any class that you're assigned should be a course that you teach regularly. I like to think of them as courses, uh, at least when I was teaching, they would be like the ones that would be my baby, like my favorite course, the one I'm always in, updating naturally. So this shouldn't come as extra work or an extra load. It should be within courses you're already uh, managing. And really the goal for the entire college is that we want our courses touched more frequently. So if one department has 12 courses, one person can't manage all 12. So the goal is that those courses are split up between the members of the departments uh, that may, maybe know them the best, so they're touched more frequently. And you can see I have the captain uh, picture up here because I want you to think of yourself as a, the team captain for this course. So that's going to require that, that you manage it, of course, but then you also communicate with the rest of the players uh, within your department about any changes or anything they need to do to their individual CRNs. So here's just a short list of the responsibilities. It's not long, and like I said, you guys are already all-stars or you wouldn't have been chosen for this. So I'm sure you're doing it already. But again, it's just to manage your master shell. That includes any updates you need to do for each semester. Uh, it's going to put you in a role where you're able to add content from your CRNs over to the master. Um, so a lot of you that are teaching the same class every semester, you know you have different instructional activities or maybe different assessment items. You'll move those to the masters so they're kept. And then you'll also want to reflect any changes in curriculum or industry standards. So just make sure the, the master shells are constantly updated and as current as they need to be. Um, and to help you do this, you will complete the master shell readiness checklist. Many of you have seen it already, and we'll look at it here in just a minute. But it's basically designed just to cover the basics to get the shell ready to be copied to the CRNs. And then lastly, like I discussed a minute ago, just be sure to discuss any changes you make with the rest of the team. And really what you want to do is give the master shell when it's copied over to the CRNs, make it as complete as impossible for your instructors. And this really goes out to people who may have multiple sections, like in English 1101 class, it has 20 sections. That master, all 20 different sections will get it, so it needs to be ready to go. Because we really want the instructors just to be able to pick it up and run with it, instead of to add things within their individual CRNs. All right, to make sure that we are at the same starting point, I want to start at the, at the very beginning and explain the difference between a master shell and a CRN shell. If you're looking at your screen, you can see right here that this has the term master in it, where the CRNs have individual CRN numbers. Why this is important is that master shells never go away. They never have students in them, so they just stay constantly every single semester whereas the individual CRNs do disappear or are archived the semester after they're taught. So the goal is to make the masters perfect or the best they can be so that each CRN will get all of that material. If any of you are managing a master shell and do not have access to it, be sure to reach out to me immediately so I can grant you access to the master so you can start working in it. The deadline to work on masters for fall 2019 is August 5th at 8 o'clock. So at that point, anything that's in that master shell will be copied to the fall CRNs. So as of August 6th, you won't want to work in the master shell for fall anymore. That's when you'll move to the actual CRNs. So if anyone has any questions about that, just let me know and uh, I'll go through it with you in more detail. The next thing I want to show you is within your faculty learning community, and all of you have a faculty learning community under your organizations, uh, we created a course coordinator training, which is a really short thing. It's just, again, to make sure we're on the same page. I know some of you have been here for years, and I know a couple uh, course coordinators that were recently hired. So this is just to make sure we are on the same page. So if you go to lessons and enter the course coordinator training, if you move through, you're going to 
experience videos and, and many of you have seen in on campus trainings on this or have already viewed these videos if you're one of the people that for instance came to a Atlanta Tech Blackboard navigation training don't feel like you have to watch it this is really to make sure that everyone who's coordinating courses are coming from you know, the same starting point so if you've already seen any of these you are you're welcome to move on welcome to review whichever you feel uh, but these are here to make sure everyone is aware of this information so the three videos are the navigation which is how we are all going to set up our courses so the student experience is the same moving from course to course has nothing to do with the content but rather just the design of the course the next video is objective alignments because we want to make sure all the course co coordinators are adding instructional items and assessment items that reflect back to the state standards or objective. So watch this one or review. And the last one is the TCSG general accessibility training video. This came out a few years ago. So if you've been with the system, you've probably watched it, but it's something that all faculty are supposed to watch and be checked off on uh, through TCSG. So if you haven't seen this yet, please watch this one as well or review if you, if you need to. The next item is just a short course coordinator yeah. agreement. It's basically saying that you're aware of the policies and the, and the goals that are held within those videos um, and that you understand you are going to uh, manage the course and complete the master shell readiness form. So once you finish this short quiz, you'll click here to launch it when you get to this point. The very last thing you will do is complete the master shell readiness form. You can find a link to this in the calendar announcement I made and you can find a link to it within the course coordinator training. So what you're going to do is for each master shell you're teaching that upcoming semester or that that is being offered rather and that you're responsible for you'll go through and just complete this form. And I promise I did not make this to to impose any more work on you rather it's just things you should be doing you probably already are along with some information we have to give back to TCSG so we have to collect it anyway and when you go through you'll see that there's numerous videos to help you with certain things um, if you need reminders all these are different videos to help you figure out how to add something to your course or change some things so I'm going to scroll down to questions 11 through 19 have to do with third party content. If you don't use any online content from a third party or your publisher, you can skip to question 20 by answering no. But if you do, the next series of questions we have to have answered because I have to submit it to TCSG. This has to, a lot to do with uh, student privacy. They want to make sure that um, the logins are private and as well as keeping grades. So if you do use third party publisher content, then you'll answer these and you also might have to call your sales rep to get some of the answers. Okay, so once you finish this readiness checklist, you'll submit it and you'll be done. That's all you need to do to get your course ready. I know there's a lot of work involved, but there's always a lot of work in managing a course as it is. On the positive note, if you're doing this to courses that you enjoy, I hope it doesn't feel like work, more like you're just making the courses better because we're gonna be working on different things to add in. So this year's getting you all set up as course coordinators and in future semesters, we're gonna be adding in different things to look at, different things to consider just to enrich those courses for your students.